We're not going to go 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. We're not going to do that. Mm -mm. We're going to do 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 goes here. Why? Because this distinguishes classes. And if you have classes which are four years apart, think about it. 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds, 20-year-olds, and 21-year-olds, four years, are going to fit in this class. Do you see that? I can't include 22 here. That would be a class with a 5. It would include the 22-year-olds. Do you see the point there? That would actually be a class with a 5. So be careful. This is where people make a mistake on the test. They go 22, and then they're off a sequential year for every class. And then and they go, wait a minute, I have way too many classes. This has zero. Well, that's because you did wrong. Okay. So this is the way we do this. We go four here, and then we, we're going to create eight classes from here on out. So 18 to 22. 22 to what? 24. Hopefully 20. Remember, our class width is four. And then again to? And then? How many classes do we need? Eight. Perfect. And then what? And then what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know what? That's going to work out perfect for us because we have 44 in our group, right? Look at our last class is going to include. Um, let's see. Five, six, seven, eight. Why are we too many? Uh, I guess that could happen since you round up. You might have an extra class in there, uh, which we do. We're going to have 0, 46 through 47. 40, so we do this, then we create our classes going this way. So we're just going to go to one less than our next, next uh, lower class limit. So this is going to be our 21, our 25, our 29, 33, 37, 41, 45, and then lastly we're going to have 49. But that's the way we do this. We create Lower, we, we create all the lower class limits first. And finally, we're just going to tally up the results. We're going to start on this next time. You have all the information to make these now, but I, I really do want to go through this and do this again and count up all the people and make sure that we have that down. How many people understood what we talked about today? Okay. Again, why we might have an extra class is because you round, you do round up. Um, that's necessary to include everybody, but I guess you can get an extra class. Over. You do have some homework? No, 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 not. Oh, it's oh, it's just reverse it. It sounds a lot better. Doesn't make it sense. Just because I want it to. Okay, uh, you're gonna do. By the way, this is also on the website, which I gave you over there. Uh, go ahead and. Look at the, please go on that. That way you get more views and feel cooler. Can you do that for me? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, go to section 1.5 and do page 34 to 35. Numbers are 1, 2, 5 through 25. That assignment's also on the website. If you go under and look at your class homework assignments, that'll be there as well. All right, guys, that'll be due on Monday. Have a great day. I'll see you on Monday. Okay, so if you do remember, last time we were going through our frequency distributions, and I have given you definitions for this. Can you remember what our class width was from last time? Four. four. All right. And the way we figured out our class width from last time is we took the maximum value for our sample minus the minimum value for our sample. We divided by the number of classes we wanted, and then we rounded up. As we found from last time, this is an approximate way to get your classes, but you're never going to be too low. You're, you're going to have a class for every person at least. Maybe, I think we have one extra actually. We're going to have zero number, but that's okay. So our class width in our case was four. The lower class limit, that was the smallest value in each class. So we're going to list those out in just a second. And the upper class limit is the largest value in each class. The class midpoint, we'll get to those after we fill out our, our chart over there, our frequency distribution. Now the question I have for you is this, as far as the class width goes, does the class width measure four units this way from lower to upper, or does it measure this way from lower to lower? So we're not going to go 18 to 22 this way, we're going to go 18 to 22 this way. And I gave you the reason why last time we want four years spaced here, not five. If you go to 22 here, there's five years between the lowers. And we want only four, that's why our class width is four. So we'll make this 22. 
The next one I think I gave you, of course, well, we're going up by four, so what's the next one? 26. And then? 30. Then? 34. Mm -hmm. 38. Perfect. 42. And? 46. Okay, and I made the other ones up, the next part up very quickly last time. But what you're doing is you're just going to one step below your next lower class limit. So from 18 to 22, we need the number what right here? We don't want 22. Because 22, then you would count 22 year olds in two different classes. That's not a good thing. So we're going to go to 21, you're right. And then you can count up by four for all these limits also. So for 21, this one's going to be, and it should be one less than our next lower class limit. Okay. Do you feel okay on getting the classes made up? So we get the maximum uh, level for our sample minus the minimum value. We divide by the number of classes we want. We start at some starting spot, either the lowest value of our sample or something just below that. We make up our classes by using the class width in conjunction with that starting spot. Make up all your lower class limits first, then we fill the upper class limits in. A couple of things before we actually do the frequency. The class midpoints. The midpoint is just the middle value of those classes. It's, it's nothing tricky to find this. You're just going to average the upper and lower class limits. We haven't talked about average, but we're talking about the, the average that you all know as average, where you add two things together and you divide by two. That's our, our average. So when we find the middle, the, the class midpoint, we're talking about the, the value right between the middle of our class. So we're going to take the upper class limit. minus the lower class limit, I'm sorry, plus the lower class limit, and we'll divide that by two. And that'll give us the midpoint for each class. Which one have I made out the boundaries? The class boundaries are really only used, to, these two are really only used to make up a histogram, which we're going to talk about in just a little while. Class boundaries <clears throat> are the very middle between one upper class limit and the next lower class limit. So we're going to discover these in just a second, but that's our definition. So in order to find a class boundary, what you're going to take is an upper, the lower class limit, Minus the upper class limit, or plus the upper class limit, and geez, I'm saying everything wrong today, huh? My goodness. <laughs> we'll re rephrase that for you. We're just going to average these ones as well. So the midpoint is the average of these two, the lower and the upper for the same class. The boundary is the average of these two, right in between the, the two classes. So for us, we'll say that the boundary is used to separate classes without gaps, because we can't have gaps on a histogram. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute. With the class width, um, are we giving it to us, or we have to come up with our own? Well, you see, your class width is determined by your maximum value, minus your minimum value, and the number of classes that, that you need. So if I tell you five classes with a certain number... So the number of the classes that we need, we're going to be given that? Yes. Oh. Yeah, I'll give you that. I, for this one, I just made up, I want eight classes. All right. So for you guys, I'll, it'll be like in your homework, or I'll give it to you on a test, okay? On a test, I would give you like a list of data, like, I don't know, 20 pieces of data. I'd say I want you to make up a histogram or a frequency distribution, which comes from it. Uh, I'm sorry, histogram comes from the frequency distribution. So I'd give you the data. I'd say I want six classes. Figure it out. You take the maximum value, minus the minimum value, divide by six, round up that gives your class width. Does that make sense to you? If you forgot how to do that, remember, go online. You can refresh that all you want. Um, the whole lesson's on there already. So. Okay, the, great question. Any other questions about any of these things so far? We're going to go through in a minute and identify all of our lower class limits, upper class limits, and all this stuff as well. So class boundaries, last thing we have to define. This is used to separate our classes without gaps. You see on a histogram, it's like a touching bar chart. We can't have any gaps in there.
Okay, so let's go through and let's identify what all these numbers are because I've given you the definitions, but we really haven't even discussed what they, they actually are for this example. Can you tell me the first lower class limit that we have? Very good. Okay, what's the next lower class limit that we have? Good. How many lower class limits should we have? Because of eight classes, that's right. So 22, and then we go on up to 26, etc. We should have eight of them. It goes all the way to 46. How about the upper class limits? What are the upper class limits here? The one's the first one, and then? Mm -hmm. And again, we're getting all the way up to 49. There should be eight of them. The class midpoints, that's the average of the upper and lower class limits for each class. Can you tell me what is the class midpoint for our very first class? How much is that? Do it on your paper if you have to. You're taking the upper plus the lower divided by two. You're averaging that. Nice glasses, by the way. I like them. Thank you. I kind of like That's why I like them. I got new ones, new glasses. They look identical. Wow, the same yeah. See, I can't, I'm a creature of habit. You can't really change if your things are going well, which I hope that these are going well. You can't change it. <laughs> Did you figure it out as I was rambling? Use your calculator if you have to. You're averaging, averaging a couple numbers. What numbers are we adding together up here for our first class midpoint? Can you tell me that? Great, so we're, we're going to have a class midpoint for every single class. So we look here, we go, okay, that's my upper class limit, that's my lower. Let's add them together, let's divide by two, that tells me what's right in the middle of those two numbers, and what number is that? I'm sorry, I heard rustling and mumbling. What was it? 19.5. 19.5? Okay, I believe you. Did anybody else get 19.5? Do you know how 19.5 is being found? Some people know. Okay. If you're not quite sure how you're finding the class midpoint, watch. How the class midpoint is found for each class, you're taking the upper, CL stands for class limit. In our case, the upper class limit for our very first class is 21. So we are taking 21. We are adding to it. What are we adding to it? Oh, that's the lower class limit. That's this right here. You're adding 18, and then you're dividing by 2. Why are you dividing by 2? Mm -hmm. Why are you dividing by 2? So how you find an average of two things is you, or average of any number of things, you add them all together and you divide by the number of things you added. So here we have two classes, you're adding them, you're dividing by the number 2, and then this number, this value, is going to give you 19.5. You with me now? What's the next midpoint? Can you find that? I'll give you a little hint. Well, firstly, you understand you can add these two together and divide by two, right? Mm -hmm. Nod your head if you're with me on that. That's how you find that class midpoint. Or you can be a little smarter than that. What's our class width? Just add four to that number. You're going to come with the class midpoint. Okay. This is kind of neat. All these numbers are multiples of well. You add 4 to that, they're not multiples of 4, but you keep adding 4 to it. Here you keep adding 4 to it. Therefore, the midpoint, you're going to keep adding 4 to it. You don't have to repeat all that work. You don't reinvent the wheel. Just add 4 to it. So someone who has added these two and divided by 2, tell me what you got. And t guess what?